kick off with this recent tweet. That's a Michael Hollick wrote. And for those of you who don't know Michael, he is a professor of medicine at the University of Boston. He's an endocrinologist and he discovered the active form of vitamin D. So he is an extremely pedigreed clinician researcher and um, biochemist. And the, the 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 framework of this or the context of this tweet um, is I was reading this paper by by Holick, and I think it this anecdote or this section of the article that he written wrote is it really hits to this whole idea that we're talking about of ultraviolet light and the solar callus and full spectrum sunlight and being a being a beneficial thing and I think in this article and he kind of explains or hits back at the essence of why the the modern exposure narratives are so wrong. So what I've tweeted is I've said, does UV light cause DNA damage? The short answer is yes, absolutely. But the full story is much more nuanced. And I'm going to read out exactly what the article said. A study, so this is, this is Holick explaining in his review article. So he's saying that, uh, a study by Felton et al. provided a more realistic insight regarding sun exposure and its beneficial and negative health consequences. They exposed healthy adults with little skin pigmentation, so skin type, Fitzpatrick's type 2, to low-level st- simulated United Kingdom June midday sunlight, equivalent to 13 to 17 minutes six times weekly, and evaluated its effect on vitamin D status and outcome measures related to cutaneous DNA damage. So, They're measuring how much uh, DNA damage was occurring. Observed a significant 49% increase in circulating levels of 25-hydroxy vitamin D at the end of the six-week study. Well, that's that makes sense to you, to everyone who's listening, because you know you've been listening to my work that UVB light is how we make vitamin D. So that sounds all very reasonable. What did what else did they do? They they skin biopsied these people. So a histological or a, or a skin analysis under the microscope of biopsies revealed after the first week of exposure a significant increase in CPD-positive nuclei in keratinites uh, compared to the photoprotective skin of the same volunteer. So what a, what is what is CPD? These are um, these essentially markers of DNA damage. The Cyclopyridine dimer is is the acronym. So, what does that mean? It means that when the UV light, remember, UV is a really high energy photon. It, it's it's got a lot of energy in it. It can break DNA bonds, and what it does is it strikes the DNA double helix. It causes the formation of um, cyclopyridine in the DNA strand, and they need to be excised. They need to be cut out by special DNA repair enzymes. Or the the body needs to get rid of these somehow, so it stops, for, so it doesn't form cancers. So what did they find? That after the first week, that they, they found this evidence of DNA damage in the keratinocytes, the skin cells, compared to uh, an area of the skin of the same volunteer that wasn't exposed to the UV light. Okay, so again, that speaks to the first part of my tweet. So there was DNA damage. However, and this is the big however. Remarkably, one day after the last exposure of the six-week study, the authors observed a significant clearing of the CPD-positive nuclei that corresponded to undetectable levels of CPD in the urine and no change or accumulation in another DNA marker for DNA damage from baseline, which was a urinary 8-oxo-DG, which is a measure of oxidatively damaged DNA. So what's the translation? Is that that one day after they've stopped exposing people to this UV light, they found that there was that they couldn't find any more of these these cells with that DNA damage. So they they disappeared. And furthermore, um, when they looked for this DNA damage market in the urine of these people, they couldn't find any. And nor could they find any um other of this other DNA marker, which was also um 8 oxo DG, which is also a mark of DNA damage. So what do these results suggest? They suggested that the skin at adapted to the sun exposure and did not demonstrate accumulating DNA damage, but did demonstrate that there was likely continued vitamin D3 synthesis. So, and they also conducted in skin type five adults. So, you know, African people, and as expected, found minimum histological evidence of DNA damage and no significant increase in 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels. 
This again demonstrated how the evolution of skin pigmentation evolved uh, for taking advantage of the beneficial effects of sun exposure um, while minimizing damaging consequences. This suggests that you can have your cake and eat it too when it comes to the utilization of sensible sun exposure to improve a person's vitamin D status. So profound. The, these results in this in the skin in the fair skin people suggested that the skin adapted to sun exposure and did not demonstrate accumulating DNA. DNA damage, but did demonstrate there was likely continued vitamin D3 synthesis. If you remember, and if you were at Regenerate, I'm just about to post my talk from that, hopefully maybe this week or next. Uh, we What I talked about was the vitamin D cousins, these, these photo lumistrol, tachistrol, and all these other chemical cousins. What do they do? They upregulate DNA repair. So what we're seeing is that as the body continuously gets exposed to UV light, it upregulates the the enzymes it needs to fix the DNA, and that's happening largely in part due to the vitamin D system and all those chemical cousins of vitamin D. So really, um, you know, this is so, such a profound excerpt that I really feel like um, and this needs to be hammered home even even more. Uh, but and it's from this excellent book chapter sunlight uv radiation vitamin d and i just wanted to give you guys that um and highlight that fascinating um thing that i've recently written and and again giving nuance to this topic of, of skin uv damage and skin cancer and you know really you can point to this study in this um this excerpt for again the dermatologists or anyone who's telling you that you need to avoid uv light will look yeah, UV light is causing you uh, DNA damage, but it's cleared if you have continuous low-level exposure. Um, it, it clears away, it go, completely goes away because it is that's the definition of hormesis, the definition of, of a hormetic stress. So I hope you guys find that as fascinating and as interesting uh, as I do because I, I really think that is, that's the missing piece for centralized medicine who is really preaching the, the avoidance of sun exposure. So,